um, I would like to present some data on also the political situation in Switzerland uh, on health services research and um, I would like to capture five points, the legal situation of CAM in Switzerland, who provides care in CAM and for what kind of patients, for which complaints and I give a brief summary at the end. So uh, this, uh, this talk is related to the legal situation of CAM and this is, has changed over the last 10 years and there was a public vote where about 60% of the general public e uh, voted for the integration of CAM into healthcare service and this was in 2009. And afterwards there was a payment of CAM in the general health insurance which was pretty new for European country and now it is in the constitution in the Bundesverfassung since 2017 and there are five uh, different types of interventions who are paid by the health insurance and the public health insurance and this is an innovative uh, uh, thing for Europe. Acupuncture is already paid by 1984, anthroposophic medicine, TCM, homeopathy and phytomedicine are integrated in the constitution. So, but there are also non-medical complementary practitioners because the first part is only for related to physicians, the second part is for complementary therapy practitioners which also uh, provide care in Switzerland. So, um, on the one hand we have about 1,000 healthcare providers as physicians which are trained with special training to get reimbursed for CAM intervention and they get reimbursed by the general health insurance. And on the other hand we have non-medical therapists which are pretty much more, 40,000 and 200 interventions are paid and the training is offered by schools or private institutions that you get an accreditation and the accreditation is done by institutes and you get a reimbursement only for patients with a supplementary health insurance. So the patient has a choice either to go to a physician or to go to a, um, a non-medical therapist in Switzerland. So and we had um, the idea and created a study on the CAM use in Switzerland. So on the backbone is the, the legal situation. This is affected also by the population as heard already because the population voted that CAM is integrated into healthcare and but also the legal situation affects the population because they have the choice. And we uh, conducted a study with Suica which is a health insurance company and EMR which is a therapist register and uh, we get data from the population from the Suica health insurance and we got data from therapists which have been registered in this registry uh, of EMR. And uh, to make the situation a little bit more complicated, we have a, a difficult situation in Switzerland. This is a map showing the language regions in Switzerland and uh, maybe this is pretty obvious for you but we have foreign guests and maybe this is not that obvious for you. In red you see the parts where most uh, people speak German and blue the parts where most speak uh, French and there are also green parts, yeah, that's maybe pretty obvious. So, and green means Italian. So you have, if you do a survey or conduct research, you have also all, all, the, uh, all the time to do it three times. And this has also consequences for the regional variation. So regional variation in Switzerland is a huge topic and uh, the regional variation in the use of care is an important thing. And you see here as well, as just as a random example, the variation of hospital beds per 10,000 inhabitants and you see here in Ticino here, this is, there are more beds available than here uh, in, the, in the middle of the, of the country. So there's a huge variation uh, within Switzerland. So this is an important topic and we also want to capture this important topic in our survey and in our, our study. So first I want to present some data of preliminary data because we're in the middle of the analysis of the Suica health insurance uh, um, uh, and about the population, what uh, they really receive as, a, as an intervention. So we have data of users of CAM with the supplementary health insurance about the last five years and there's a huge number of those people, so about 400,000 um, data sets have been investigated 
and um, they are a little bit less male than female uh, in the language region. So this is an important thing. It's about 90% of the German part because Suica is very popular in the, in the German part of, of Switzerland, but it's not very popular in the French part. And the living environment is about 50%, comes from the agglomeration of a huge city, town, and rural region are all well presented. So we have subjects in the data set, about 400,000. We have data about sex, age, etc. We have data about their treatments, and we only used the top 20 treatments because a lot of treatments are available. As you know, have seen, 200 different options are available from non-medical practitioners. So we used just the top 20 uh, to make a selection out of that. And we have also costs per treatment and user. So we have also data, what does this treatment cost for one person? And about 7% of those people who have a supplementary health insurance used uh, acupuncture within the last five years, which is already a considerable large number of patients. So, and the user patterns, um, according to these different interventions, as said, there's one intervention to 20, we just investigated these 20 interventions, is very common for females that it is more prominent that females use more often CAM. And this is across all those 20 different interventions. So that's a clear pattern, and it's not surprising at all. But if you look at the data on uh, what, what happens, if you look at data for, of the French language reason, there are, this is, would be one of not ratio, and there are, are interventions which are not that common and are interventions which are even more common in the French part. So it differs a lot between French and the German parts of Switzerland, what is considered to be a good treatment or maybe what is considered to be offered to patients. So this is a, an important confounder maybe as well in these data. So, um, who uses acupuncture? So overall, over Switzerland, um, so and age is associated with high use, female sex is uh, with a double odds ratio, uh, French speaking is a le little bit less uh, uh, often used, and agglomeration and rural area compared to living in town is a little bit associated with higher use. And there's one thing here, the living index is an index with higher socioeconomic status, so this means that people living in an area with a higher socioeconomic status are more prone to use also acupuncture. So, and also the costs of acupuncture use. So, if one person is an acupuncture user, there is an increase with age. So, if there's an increase in age, uh, that costs also emerge. So, the longer the, the duration of the acupuncture treatment is, or the more often this person uses acupuncture over this time for five years. And also in females, there are higher costs that females more often use acupuncture and have higher costs for, the, for these. And also the living index is positively associated. So what I want to say basically is we have established uh, well-known factors which contribute to the use, like female gender, but there's also a lot of variation within this data, and we have to analyze it very uh, in much in detail to capture all this variation within our analysis. So the second study is uh, on EMR therapist registry. So, and the therapist registry uh, has about 17,000 registered uh, therapists who uses these top 20 interventions. So we send out an email to them and ask them to contribute to our survey and you see German, French, Italian, there was no separate Italian part but we nevertheless developed a, a different survey for people who are only able to speak Italian. So and at the end we have about 3,500 uh, 3, uh, people included in the analysis and these therapists have captured all uh, these 20 interventions. So this is a rather good response rate of 20%, I think, for a random sampling, um, which is not that bad. And I think we can just have a look what they do now, what, they th what the therapists really do in practice. So the mean age is about 50, about 80% are female, the years working, uh, 14 years, and they have their own practice very often. And they sometimes also work in a in a shared practice, and uh, so this, therefore this 10% comes up. 
and the office hours are about 17% per session. So the first consultation takes about 75 minutes, the second consultation takes about 60 minutes, which is not, it's a quite uh, expected finding. So the good thing is they are not that satisfied at the beginning with the start of work. Yeah? But over the years, if you ask them now, what is their job satisfaction now and 10 is best, they are really satisfied. And in five years, they expect to be as well very satisfied. So it could be hard to start this kind of job, but at the end, the people who stay in this job uh, are very, uh, very uh, satisfied with doing, uh, running such a practice. And looking at the satisfaction, the collaboration with physicians, that looks not that promising, yeah, to be honest. Yeah? So if this about, uh, 30% um, of those are not really able to, to say if they are satisfied or not satisfied, but there's a huge variation in there. So maybe people have a huge, uh, good collaboration with physicians, maybe other therapists do not have a, a good collaboration with physicians. So that's an interesting finding for me. So what are the most often used treatment of all of this <laughs> therapist? And you see classical massage, craniosacral therapy, tra traditional Chinese medicine, etc. So this is the, the ranking here. But what is more important is you see here about a quarter of uh, those people, of these, those therapists living in the French part are using osteopathy. Yeah? But this is not that present in other parts of the country. Yeah? So this is specialty. So, and, other, and here, craniosacral is not offered that much, but maybe this is an association because they, they do a similar thing, and maybe they are they're built uh, or trained in, in different uh, kind of treatments. So, this is an overall picture, and we try to publish it um, in the future to make this data available as well. So, and what we then wanted to do, that we asked them to rate 19 different complaints. What kind of complaint do you treat with your treatment you offer in your practice? Yeah? And they rated, really, they rated, they did it, 90 complaints, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then we build cluster out of these complaints and say, okay, some complaints are really related to each other, so if you treat this, then you also treat the other things. And we try to, to make a matrix of these 27 clusters and 20 cl uh, clinical treatments and so this is a huge <laughs> data matrix, uh, and we are in the middle of analyzing that. So and I'll just give you a preview of what is coming up on that. And this is for acupuncture. So compared to other therapists, acupuncture therapists do everything and treat every complaint. These are complaints. Yeah? So this means they have a broad indication, and they have not the one specialty of complaint they just want to treat because every risk ratio is above one yeah and there's nothing where the acupuncture treatments are not used that often so this is, was an amazing finding for us so the interesting finding is uh, uh, there's a huge variety and uh, for example here we expected that headache and back pain would be up here, yeah, the most often used treatment. But about 90% of our therapists said we treat headache or back pain or such issues, 90%, and this is all over the place on any, any CAM intervention, and this is not a specialty of acupuncture. Yeah? And the, the most uh, highly, uh, uh, most often used uh, uh, is acupuncture, for example, in pregnancy, allergy, urology, so something like this here, where the confidence intervals are pretty narrow. So this is a little bit an unexpected finding. We have to analyze this more in detail because it was really unexpected for us as well. And maybe um, we come up with some other data as well on other treatments because we have to set this into relation what other treatments do is this a unique finding for acupuncture or other treatments maybe have such a, such a uh, picture as well? So to summarize, we want to do stratified analysis for different interventions. I think this is an important, CAM is a mixed bag and it's important to have stratified analysis. 
And so far, we only analyzed from the SWICA data the single intervention, but there are also multiple interventions. We said, okay, le let's look at acupuncture and let's look at the other treatment. But maybe there are overlaps because a person who uses acupuncture also uses another treatment. And we also have the opportunity to look at a change over time. And this is a good opportunity because the SWICA data comes up regularly and we have now established a procedure how to analyze this. And we can look maybe how the legal changes, how the changes in the healthcare system may also affect this data and also the healthcare use of the population. The good thing here on the EMR register data is we have a high job satisfaction, but there might be some improvement possible for interprofessional care. So the integration may be uh, better. And we have to look at the match of intervention and complaints. We have now developed a strategy on how to analyze this, but we have to look if this uh, finding can be replicated in other, for other uh, complaints and for other interventions. So that's for now. And I want to thank all those people who have been involved in this study. And I want to thank Swika for sharing uh, the data, and which is also a good opportunity for us to get a picture of the Swiss situation and EMR for the support in conducting the survey, because to contact uh, the therapist is really a huge, huge effort. And thank you very much.